G'day ladies and gents, and welcome to everything that is wrong in top tier jets in War Thunder. I don't normally make ranty videos, and I'm not normally a terribly ranty person, unless I'm in a terrible mood, which is kind of right now. One of the things that has been on my mind for a very long time is a bunch of things, or a bunch of stuff, that has been needing to be improved in top tier jets, and we're going to go over that in this video. Now, as you can see, I'm flying the T2 on Korea. It's a 10.3 matchup, and it's honestly quite balanced. This is the one of the first times in War Thunder where we have had a constant balance matchmaker at top tier. I think this is fine. I think this is one of the positives of top tier. However, there are a bunch of things that absolutely make me frustrated to the core when it comes to top tier. It can be a very, very enjoyable game mode, but there are just these little things that grind my gears every single time I play a match at 10.3, or even 10.0. These things are just little, little tiny, tiny things sometimes. Other times, they're kind of massive and need to be overstated. One of the things that I'd like to first of all talk about is exactly what I'm doing. Now, I always do a rush, and this is because this has been the proven way to do the best sort of uh, tactic in, in War Thunder. It is one of the best ways to make the most out of your jets, especially considering the level of thrust that you can generate with a jet like the T2, as well as the maneuverability. Obviously, this isn't the case for everything, but the first thing that I would like to say, and this is a little bit nitpicky, is... Have a look at the entire team. I'll pan the camera and there we go, you can see it, boom. Right there, the entire team is climbing. Now, you shouldn't really climb in jets, especially when everyone in the entire lobby can burst climb to 8,000 meters. You just shouldn't bother. Why would you climb when you can put that, that energy, that thrust, to better use? Go, put yourself into a, into a horizontal line, get as much speed as possible. Now, the next thing is this radar. Why is the radar just like this? It, it's, I thought it was an all-weather radar. I thought I'd be able to spot things through clouds with an all-weather radar, and you would think that, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. Anyway, I'm going to climb a little bit, and I'm going to try and draw out this phantom. You can see he sort of Lovely looking there, looking like nice and juicy. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I should lead him away from the battlefield. And another thing that I would like to, you know, barely touch on is a bit of tunnel vision. A lot of the War Thunder Jet community at this point, or, or you know, the Jet players, I suppose, have this mad tunnel vision. It is incredible. I've never seen anything like it in the in the, anywhere. It's just the most incredible tunnel vision that I've ever seen, and it just blows my mind at how focused a single individual can be on a single target. And this happens so often. Keep your head on a swivel, for God's sake. I'm going to bait this this uh, little phantom here. I can see it's just me and this T2 against this phantom. And there's another T2, which is fine. He's appeared nice and far on the radar. And I'm about to, you know, go up into a vertical maneuver here, try and get the phantom with his pants caught down. And what the fucking hell is that? You can't be serious. Where the hell did you come from? This Phantom FGR2 just appears out of nowhere. The spotting system is just too small. The distance needs to be drastically increased. And I don't know why this hasn't already been this way. And of course, I lose a wingtip. But not before we get some absolutely beautiful frame drops every time someone fires a bloody missile. It's incredible. This has been the case for something like six months, and I don't see why it hasn't been addressed. You know, it all wouldn't be so bad if I didn't bloody well level out. What is this? Sure, one Israeli F-15 managed to do it back in 19-whatever. It doesn't mean that I should be able to do it every single time. It should be the exception and not the rule. In fact, in a game like this, where we're looking at being somewhat competitive, then it shouldn't be a rule at all. It shouldn't be a thing. Not only that, but I'm able to control this plane 
with remarkable ease. Sure, I can't roll as well. Sure, I bleed a lot of speed. But you know what? I'm still able to get shots off, and I'm still able to keep my plane in the air. In fact, so much so that I think I might engage this T2, who's been put in a precarious situation by my teammate, and look at that, I managed to get myself a kill with half a wing. This isn't a rarity either. This happens with Sabres, this happens with G91s, this happens with just about every plane in the game, of course, except the MiG-15, the MiG-17, and in some cases the MiG-19. Why am I surprised? It's just horrible. It is insulting to think that if you get a kill in this game, it doesn't really mean anything because that plane is still in the fight. That plane is still airworthy somehow for some reason. Because, I don't know, an Israeli F-15 managed to do it several years ago, or I've heard stories of some Sabres managing to do it. Yeah, it happens. It can happen. And I've, I've been told this and I've seen it myself. It can happen happen, but it is the exception and not the rule. All of these things combine together every single goddamn match just weigh down on you, and if you're trying to get footage, or if you're trying to, you know, enjoy the, the tanks and planes that you ground out for, for six months, maybe a couple of months if you're, if you're good enough, maybe years. Some people I know are just reaching their top tier jets, and they haven't, they haven't played the, uh, this stuff at all, and they've been grinding for years. It's truly insulting to have to get to this tier and be shafted by poorly thought out game mechanics. It's almost like the devs don't play their own game, which is not surprising. They mostly play arcade, and they don't put in any more than five or so hours every week. It's incredible how this reflects poorly on War Thunder's jet combat, especially at top tier in realistic battles. I'm able, look at this, this is absolutely ridiculous. You know, if this wasn't the case, and you know, I wasn't getting shafted every single match by a crappy spotting system, or you know, my supposedly all weather radar not working, like, I find it quite ridiculous that a small amount of clouds absolutely hampers a solid, you know, radar from, I guess the 70s or the 80s. It is absolutely incredible. And not only that, but the zombie planes that are sitting in the air right now, they're everywhere. There's that FGR2 sitting there as well. And this happens every single jet match. It weighs down on you. And as someone who used to love top tier jets less than nine months ago, where we had F100 versus MiG-19, it required skill. It required great talent, good aiming, good patience, and honestly, a lot more fun because of that. It has almost all disappeared because of these few changes. Something needs to be addressed, and something needs to be addressed quickly. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of people leaving, and a lot of people just no longer enjoying top-tier jet combat. Much as like, I have lost my interest in playing 10.3. I'm going to stick to 10.0 and below because of this kind of stuff. Anyway, ladies and gents, I apologize for the rant, but uh, I hope you have a good day. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.